Welcome back everyone. Today I wanted to share a video with you. Uh, I saw that on my list here of everything that I have that the blade holder and blade setup was the biggest one for you guys. So what I wanted to do was try to maybe clear some things up just a little bit more. Uh, remember if you have any questions or comments please do uh, put them down below so that uh, I can know what you guys need and I'll do the best I can. I no longer have the vinyl cutters or heat presses or anything like that. And so what I can do is try to get information and whatnot and make it into a video for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this. So this is a video um, I put together here. And I'm going to be stopping the video talking about a couple of things here. So I'll stop it right here. These are the main blade holders that you guys are going to see that you're going to have with your cutters. These are mainly for the P, I mean these can be for the P cut, this can be for the MH cutter Zen cut, I mean, uh, the Zen cut, the GCC machines. This is going to be your Titan blade holders, the Cabo blade holder. Um, and the thing is, this is another another one, but the thing is you have to be careful because for example the Titan blade holder at least for US cutter, I believe, or vice versa, one is a little bit longer and one is a little bit shorter. So they're not always the same just because they look alike. Uh, so I wanted you to be careful when you're going to buy a backup uh, blade holder. For example, if you just want that blade holder to be a uh, 60 degree blade, and then meanwhile, this can be your 45, just uh, make sure you get the right one. Of course, you have your pin adapter. Uh, you've got various pin adapters as well. Uh, this can also be, I believe, a Silhouette Cameo blade holder, uh, blade holder uh, Creation P-Cut blade holder, and I also believe maybe a Laser Point 1 blade holder. Uh, it's been a little while since I've um, seen all these, but uh, and then this one is going to be probably a Copam blade holder, if not this one. But there are many blade holders out there. Let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Okay, as you can see, we still have many different blade holders out there. Um, we'll stop it right here. So this is your carriage right here, and this is your carriage arm. Uh, this is a little thumb screw right here, which tightens the uh, blade holder inside the arm. And I'll show you a little bit more about different ones. Uh, for example, this is this gold knob or a little turning thumb screw that uh, different people call it a little different, different other things. But this basically tightens the uh, the blade inside so it doesn't move up and down when you're cutting. And this is the adjuster. So in order to do the adjuster, you have to back up off, off of the uh, the gold little knob here. And so I believe this is going to be something like an MH cutter right here. I th actually, I think it's an MK1. Um, I can't remember. But I believe it's the MK MK1. But many color cutters look like this. Okay, next one. Uh, this one's going to be your Zen Cut uh, blade holder. And uh, for example, you know, some of them sit on top. Some of them sit, none of them ever sit on the, on the, under the bottom. I'm, I'm sorry, um, under the arm. They always sit either on top, inside, like this, but never underneath. So if you're putting your blade holder underneath, and this bottom part is actually touching the strip, it's definitely wrong. So don't start cutting like that. Uh, this guy right here has an adjuster on the top. It doesn't have a locking um, thumb screw or knob that you saw in the previous one there. And so basically you just turn it whichever way you want and you I'll show you later on. And then you have the amount of blade that you want sticking out and you just leave it alone. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Okay, this is a little bit different. Uh, this is on a different machine. Uh, this is a CNC. Every, I mean, they get a little bit different as you go into the uh, bigger cutters and CNC machines. Uh, this one sits in here, and this is a screw. Or it's, it could either be this one, probably this one, but this one tightens it. You can see the once you untighten this, this should be able to come out. Um, I don't know if this is an extra screw to help lock it in. But it's definitely, I believe, going to be this one that has a bolt that go or a screw that goes all the way across here to tighten it in. This does load underneath, I believe. And uh, so just a little bit different. But mainly not for you guys. You guys are going to be using the vinyl cutters. So it's going to be 
something like this. This would be your creation P cut or maybe your laser point one where you have the knob that turns and applies pressure and then therefore in between here applies pressure to the blade holder. And as you can see the lip here, it sits on top of the arm. So this is called the arm that holds the blade holder. And then this is the uh, part of the carriage that uh, goes up and down and there's different ways it goes up and down. Basically electromagnet is what it is. Turns it off, turns it on, so it goes up and down. And um, so you'll have something that looks like this. And again, you still have your adjuster knob and then your lockdown knob right there. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is kind of the same thing here. Um, this, <clears throat> this is the um, knob that you're gonna turn to unscrew it. And you can see this, is, this arm is kind of forked. So what happens is this is normally back here, and then it swings over to get in between the forked part of the arm here so that you can tighten it down so it keeps the blade, uh, blade holder inside. You can also see that there's a lip here which sits on top, and there's also when this, um, when this arm closes, there's a little angled keeper that helps to uh, also tighten it down. So it keeps it from moving inside the arm of the carriage. So you do, you will have that on some of the cutters. Most, not really too many, but it can happen. Just so you know. So when you put your blade holder in there, make sure that your lip is not accidentally sitting on top of here. I know that people will do that, <laughs> and then when the when the cutter starts cutting, you will never ever have this uh, blade hitting or uh, cutting the vinyl at all. Okay, let's go to the next one here. All right, so here is the same one that I was talking about. Uh, this is with the blade holder out. So as you can see, this is the uh, fork part that swings over, and then this swings this way into the fork to hold it down. And as you can see here, in this space here, um, this is the hinge for the uh, fork here. Um, I know that sometimes, because people uh, are a little bit too hard on these guys right here, or uh, there are plastic parts, and over time they just break. So there is a pin that goes through here, and either what will happen is, um, for example, U.S. Cutter does have these little arms here that you can replace. But sometimes you'll have where if it breaks off, that's it. You have to get a whole new carriage here. So when you do put your blade holder in, don't always put it super tight, just enough to where it's not going to move because over time this will wear out. So I just want you to know that part. And um, let's see anything else here. Um, I don't think so, I think that's about it. And like I said, um, it sits, the blade uh, holder sits on top here. Now with a Zen cut, there's a groove, especially in here with the, I believe the SC2, the SC1 cutters, uh, the Li Yu vinyl cutters, you will see a grooved part in here where the blade holder does go in with the lip and is held in place that way. But um, it's it's not on every cutter, but it's, it's, it's common. Okay, so let's talk about the blades here. And most of your blades come from China. Just about everything does come from China. Um, this is an IO-Line blade here. It comes from Shenzhen. Um, so basically the 30 degree blade is right here, your 45 degree blade is here, and your 60 degree blade is here. And basically you have more, um, more depth that you can cut, so you can cut deeper um, on uh, materials uh, such as maybe sticky flock or there's some other material that uh, I believe Caesar and other, other companies have that are really thick. Uh, maybe 3D material or whatnot, or kind of a cloth kind of material to get through. And a 60 degree blade is a good idea to do that because it has less drag and it goes through a lot better. Whereas your 45 is your general cutting. And you know, generally when you do a 30 degree blade, that's something like window tent or something like that. Because if you have a straight down, up and down blade like this, that window tent or that film that you're cutting is going to just crumple up or at some point crumple up, which is pretty much the first uh, few seconds that you put it in there. So this this what this is for, cutting a lighter material or a tent-like material 
So you want to have that angle so it drags across more instead of stabs into it and just rakes it across and it causes your, your material to bunch up and then you'll have some kind of an error. All right, let's keep going forward here. Okay, again, we're looking at your 30 degree blade, your 45 degree blade, which you'll most commonly use, and your 60, 60 degree blade. Uh, so for heat transfer, you can still use a 45 degree blade, generally for most of it, but for your thicker items, you'll want to use the 60 degree blade. 60 degree blade, I believe, might wear out a little bit more than usual, but these are not, these are, these are not the blades that came with your cutter or that will. Uh, these are, I believe, a kind of a, um, a reinforced kind of a steel kind of a blade, and they last a lot longer. And uh, I can show you those later, but for now, this is a 60, 45, and 30. And let's keep going here. Okay, now, some of you guys may see this. I'm not going to say who this is, <clears throat> but... Um, you don't have to take this completely apart. And I'll show you in another video where they did take it apart completely like this. Uh, so you can see that this is the cover. This is what's inside. They're telling you to take your blade, pull, the, pull this off, and then put it in. Technically, um, this right here is a little plunger. So if you want your blade to come out, you push this down, the blade comes out. And you can just grab it and pull it out. You don't have to sit there and unscrew this whole entire thing and then put the cap right back on. So all you need to do is take your blade, you can pull your cap off or you can leave it on at the last minute, and then all you do is just put it in there a little bit inside, just, just like this, inside, and you can basically flip it over and then you can um, make sure it's all the way in just by just easing it down on a table or something like that or a hard plastic or whatnot and you'll know when it's in it's not going to go any further and then I'll show you the adjustments and the adjustment knob here in a moment but I wanted you to know that the only reason that you might want to take this cover off is because you have been cutting for a long time um, and you're getting lots of collection of vinyl pieces all over here and it's getting in the way it's messing with your vinyl so you can take this off and clean it and um, clean around the tip here and you can clean on the inside around the bottom here because there may be debris inside of this part right here so that you can do but this you it, it's really really overkill okay let's go ahead move forward Okay, so we have a person here, like I said, you know, they're getting started, they're opening their box, they're getting their blade holder out, they're going to set it up. Uh, you can see these unscrewing it, and this is what I was telling you in the diagram. You don't have to do this. This is really overkill. All you have to do is take the blade, slip it inside of there, and you're done. Because it's going to go in here anyways. And this is a magnetic, by the way, so it will catch and it will be able to push in. So watch how he puts this in here. All right, so he puts it in like that. It's the same thing with the cover on. It's not that big of a deal. So now he's going to... You see how he pu pushed the plunger there, and it's going in and out. That's how you take your blade out and put, put it back in. If you want it out, push that down, and just pull it right through the bottom right there. Okay, it's going to go ahead and spend time and screwing all that back together. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second here. I wanted to let you know that... If you have a blade holder, it's already set up. You've already um, you've already adjusted this to where there's a barely a little bit of blade sticking out. It's always going to be ready for you, ready to go. You don't any time that you do this and and unscrew it and whatnot, you might have to make some adjustments. It's just extra work. So if you've already got this set, like I said, stick it in, tap it. On, you don't have to tap it hard, but just kind of slightly push in on the table with the blade. Um, and then you'll know it's in, it's not a problem, you're ready to go. And let's see here, anything else? And it just saves time, really. Okay, let's see what he does. Here's what I want you to see. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Did you see how he just um, he took his uh, finger there and rubbed it over the top there? I mean, don't do it hard, but you can do it kind of softly. See that right there? 
Okay, now what he's checking for is he's checking for this blade right here to come out just enough, but not more than that, because the pressure on your cutter will take care of the rest. Unless you have a thicker material, then you can put it out a little bit more, and you can add pressure. You can do both at the same time if you're trying to get through a really thick material, and sometimes you might have to do more than one cut. So if you already know that you're going to be doing this, I would make sure that the vinyl cutter that you buy can already do the job. So, so uh, there's a little bit to think about before you buy the vinyl cutter. What are you going to be doing? What material are you going to be cutting? What are you interested in? So let's ask those questions before you even buy a vinyl cutter. So if you're looking at them, uh, thinking about it, if you're going to do hats and shirts and um, you know small things like that, not a big deal. But if you're going to be cutting um, thicker mylar materials or whatnot, then you want something like um, what's called the Sakabo or the Titan 3 or something like that. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move forward and watch what he does. See how the blade's going in and out there? He's, he's checking it with his finger. Again, not too hard. You don't want to cut yourself. It's not going to cut you unless you really... Um, see that right there? Is He's tightening it down right here. And here's another blade holder. This blade holder is like the Graph Tech. I believe this is something like a silhouette. And uh, it's a little bit different. It's got the spring on there. So this is like a Graph Tech more than the silhouette. But the blade holder is kind of the same, except for I think this is thicker. The width is thicker than the Graph Tech. But essentially with the Graph Tech, you have a spring and a blade too. So he's going to be threading that on over uh, the blade there with the spring. Uh, this is just to show you how another blade holder will work, like the Graph Tech, or I think the Silhouette here. I'm not quite sure what this blade holder is, I forget. So as you can see, it's just going to put that cap on, screw it on. Okay. There we go. And we're going to be doing the same thing. It's just a little bit different. You don't have anything at the top here. The bottom is the adjuster. Now watch how we adjust this thing. Okay, the top is the adjuster. You can also adjust here, but mainly this is your cap. But mainly it's right here that you're going to be doing most of the adjusting. I think I just... Yeah, you see that blade? That's, that's definitely too much. Let's... You want to get barely out. Look at that. It's, it's kind of blurry, but uh, it's barely out. He had it over here at one time, but that's thicker material right there. For example, maybe maybe sticky flock or something like that, and um, or flock. And uh, so you want it just about right there. That's the ideal. That looks like that might even be a little bit too much out anyways. I would adjust that. Yeah, there you go. Barely sticking out this is what you want to do. Okay, now he's going to go on the paper. I mean, I'm not paper, but the uh, the vinyl. You can do the same exact thing, and all you do is just act like you're the vinyl cutter and just do a little circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can do a square. Uh, you can do whatever you want as long as when you peel this back and you flip this over and you look under it, you're not cutting through that. All you're doing is trying to cut only the vinyl. That's all you're doing, not the backing. If you indent the backing just a little bit, it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. Okay, now this uh, this right here is a GraphTech blade holder, and um, it's pretty much the same thing. You've got your adjuster, you've got your cap, where you put the blade and the spring in, and um, I think some of them now actually already have the spring more built into the bottom part, so you don't have to worry about the spring accidentally getting launched on somewhere on the floor of the carpet, and you can't find it again. And then all of a sudden, you you don't have a blade holder um, to, to work. And so basically, the new ones should come with all this built into to the bottom here. Same thing that they did before with the other uh, blade holder is you're going to check here. You're going to uh, run your finger on the back there, the backing to check to make sure there's an indent or no indentation at all on the carrier sheet because you only want to cut the surface. Okay, I think we're almost done here, guys. Getting really close to the end. Let's see, what else do we have here? I believe this actually might almost be it. Okay, here we go. Oops. Now this is going to be it here. 
Uh, so I just wanted to explain a few things, the blade holder, the blades, uh, the various blade holders, how you put them in the arm of the carriage and whatnot. If there's anything that I didn't cover, please comment down below. If there's anything that you want to want me to cover um, that you that I did not have in this video, also let me know below. If there's anything in regards to vinyl cutters or anything else, please let me know and I will try to get it for you. I do have a couple of links for you in the in the um, in the description here, so that you can have some cutting values for a couple of different uh, vinyl vendors. All right, that's going to be all for now, and thank you for joining me, and I hope this helped you out. And remember, please subscribe to help my channel. Thank you.